Hello everyone, welcome to another video about simulating computers. Today uh, we are going to talk about simulating an Intel uh, 4004 CPU. In previous videos we talked about uh, general stuff uh, regarding uh, CPU simulation and also the difference between uh, simulating a CPU or uh, an entire system. So if you haven't watched those, please uh, do so. So about this uh, Intel 4004 CPU, uh, it's usually considered to be the first microprocessor. This doesn't mean uh, that previously there weren't uh, CPUs. Uh, however, these were implemented using multiple integrated circuits and we usually had a CPU board that combined different ICs uh, to perform the CPU functions. However, with the 4004, uh, everything was integrated uh, into a single chip. So this is the major breakthrough that allowed uh, constructing uh, today's computers. And this is why it's considered the first microprocessor. Uh, even though uh, it also needed supporting ICs, as we'll see uh, shortly, uh, still this is uh, the first CPU that combines everything uh, into a single chip. It appeared in uh, 1971. It has a 4-bit architecture. This means that uh, internally uh, data is uh, stored in 4-bit registers uh, and also externally it has a 4-bit bus so there are actually only 4 pins that allows transfer of uh, address or instructions or data. Uh, however, uh, the CPU supports 12-bit uh, addresses this means the four pins uh, are used to send the address during three clock cycles. Uh, eight bit instructions, uh, there are actually a few 16 bit instructions, uh, and uh, four bit data. Also, the CPU assumes uh, there is separate program and data storage. And the uh, maximum clock rate is uh, 740 kilohertz. So this is uh, an incredibly small value compared to the three gigahertz uh, that's usual uh, today. Uh, so I've included here a couple of links uh, that contain uh, many more information regarding this uh, CPU. Uh, in today's presentation, I'm uh, going to describe only uh, a small set of its features that are uh, relevant uh, for uh, simulating it. So, uh, from the point of view of the uh, connection with uh, the external world, the CPU uh, has four uh, communication pins. Uh, that are used for transferring uh, data, instructions, and addresses. Uh, of course, it has uh, clock connections uh, and it has uh, memory control uh, that allows uh, selecting the memory bank and uh, a pin that indicates if uh, the CPU tries to communicate with uh, the read-only memory or with the RAM. So uh, when uh, this pin uh, selects the read-only memory, uh, the CPU will uh, read the program uh, from the ROM. Uh, and usually in the RAM uh, there will be data stored. Uh, also, from the CPU datasheet, uh, we notice that the CPU can directly address uh, four uh, kilobytes uh, of 8-bit 
instruction words of program memory and uh, 5120 bits so this is bits not bytes bits of uh, data storage RAM and also up to 16 4-bit input ports and 16 4-bit output ports may also be directly addressed okay so considering the first part of this description uh, if we look at the 12-bit address uh, we see this uh, is actually equivalent to 4096 addresses which is uh, this 4 kilobyte here uh, and the 5120 bits uh, is the equivalent of uh, 1,284 uh, bit words so uh, we must always remember that uh, data is stored in 4 bit words so not in bytes uh, but uh, if we want to have an equivalent in uh, bytes then this is the equivalent of 640 bytes so the data space is uh, rather limited now considering the second part of this description it mentions that uh, there are up to 16-4-bit input ports and 16-4-bit output ports uh, that may also be directly addressed however uh, here uh, we noticed uh, we noticed that there is no uh, signal allowing to select uh, an io port so how is this possible well as i mentioned earlier uh, the 4004 requires uh, supporting uh, integrated circuits so these are additional ICs uh, like the 4001 uh, read-only memory and 4002 uh, RAM uh, there are uh, also a couple of additional ICs but these are probably the most relevant so uh, the ROM uh, is organized as 256 uh, 8-bit words so these are bytes actually uh, which are intended for uh, storing uh, instructions and this is why uh, it's uh, the 4004 it's called uh, 8-bit instruction cpu because instructions are stored as either uh, one byte or two bytes and uh, this rom chip uh, also uh, offers uh, one 4-bit io port okay so <coughs> it's a really awkward design uh, compared to today's uh, architectures in which the io port is actually uh, on the memory chip in this case on the rom chip and of course you can have uh, multiple rom chips and in this case you will have uh, multiple io ports also considering the ram uh, this uh, particular chip, the 4002, uh, contains uh, 320 uh, bit of memory, uh, which is grouped in uh, four registers of 20 uh, four bit characters. Uh, 16 uh, represent uh, main mo the main memory, and uh, four registers uh, are uh, known as status registers and uh, the RAM chip also uh, contains a 4-bit output port and again you can have uh, multiple of these and you will get multiple uh, output ports uh, so again how uh, the CPU may select uh, either uh, memory data or uh, IO port well uh, first uh, for example to select the ROM chip it uses uh, this uh, uh, CM ROM uh, pin which allows differentiating between the ROM and the RAM the address is uh, 
sent on this uh, data bus. Uh, but if uh, the CPU wants to use the IO port, then uh, the instruction that uh, is doing IO is actually uh, executed by both the CPU and uh, the memory chip. So in a way, the memory chip um, is watching uh, the instruction and when it encounters a read or an IO instruction, so a memory instruction or an IO port instruction, uh, it knows uh, what to do. And uh, in this way, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know if uh, we can say that uh, this memory chip is actually a uh, uh, very small uh, CPU uh, itself because it's able to recognize instructions. It doesn't have a program counter, so it's not able to be used by itself, only in addition to a real CPU. Uh, but it can decode the instruction and execute it and it will uh, place on the uh, data bus the result of either the memory location or the IO port. And of course, in the case of a write, uh, it's able to read from the data bus the 4-bit uh, data and uh, in the case of the RAM, it can uh, store it or it can activate uh, the output line. Okay, so uh, again, the architecture is very different from uh, today's uh, computers, where uh, we usually have a memory that is that is doing only memory-related operations, and we have the I/O circuits that are doing only I/O. And also we usually have the CPU that is selecting if it's uh, I.O. or memory. Uh, also in today's architectures, in some cases, uh, we may have uh, memory mapped I.O. But again, uh, considering only these supporting circuits, this is not the case. Yeah, so the supporting circuits themselves are actually uh, reading the instruction and performing the I.O. operation if needed. Internally, uh, we'll have just a quick glance of the internal architecture of 4004. It has uh, an accumulator, which is 4-bit. Uh, it has uh, 16 4-bit registers. Actually, uh, a program uh, can access only uh, half of them and there is a special instruction to switch between the two banks. Uh, it has an address stack so uh, the program counter can be uh, pushed on this uh, address stack. Uh, this is uh, of course useful for uh, calling uh, procedures and uh, it allows for 46 instructions out of which 41 are 8 bits, so single byte, and 5 are 16 bits, uh, so 2 bytes. Uh, considering the one word instructions, uh, they are always uh, uh, separated into two parts, two 4 bit parts, uh, where uh, the first uh, part encodes the opcode and the second part uh, is known as a modifier uh, which means it can uh, either contain uh, data or uh, some address and from the data sheet I've uh, included here uh, several instructions uh, for example an uh, add instruction is encoded as 1000 this is binary so it's actually number four, uh, the number eight, sorry, uh, <coughs> and uh, it also contains uh, the register number that uh, will be added uh, to the accumulator. Okay, then the 
sub instruction. This is uh, for subtract, uh, which uh, is encoded as 1001. This is the op code. So this is uh, in binary, and decimal would be 9. Uh, and also contains uh, the register and uh, the contents of the register will be subtracted uh, from the accumulator and so on. Uh, apart from uh, arithmetic uh, instructions, uh, we also have some control instructions uh, for clearing the flags uh, or setting uh, and so on. Again, uh, the best way to learn this is uh, to consult first the data sheet and then uh, the programming manual of the CPU. Uh, considering uh, two word instructions, uh, we have uh, in the first part, uh, again, uh, the opcode, but then uh, we may have a complete 12-bit address, like in this case, or uh, we can have a condition uh, followed by a relative uh, address. Uh, and there are other possibilities. I've included here only two examples. Uh, for example, uh, this uh, JCN jump to ROM address. Uh, it uh, contains uh, the opcode 0001 binary, so this is one decimal. Then there is a condition, which of course uh, can be decoded based on the flags. Uh, and if this condition is uh, true, uh, it will go uh, to this address specified in the second uh, byte of the instruction. Uh, but this address would be in the same uh, ROM that contains this uh, JCN instruction. Okay, so now uh, from the simulation point of view, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, I already did a video about the difference between a CPU-only simulation and a system simulation. Uh, the purpose of this series of videos is uh, actually to simulate complete systems. So um, <clears throat> we're going to go that way, but uh, first let's see what uh, simulating uh, CPU only means and what uh, simulating CPU plus the support chips means. In the case of the CPU simulation, we need to uh, simulate uh, each uh, signal that goes through the pins, well, maybe without the clock signal, but uh, we need first to write the program counter address, uh, so this happens uh, using three cycles, then uh, we need to read the instruction, for this purpose we also need uh, to simulate the ROM chip, for example, uh, where uh, that particular chip will uh, see the address and provide the instruction. Then we need to decode this instruction uh, if uh, the instruction uh, requires uh, RAM access. Uh, then we need to activate the uh, RAM uh, bank select chips and uh, bank select signals. Uh, we need to write the RAM address. Again, we need to simulate the RAM chip, which will uh, provide the data. We are going to read it. And finally, we need uh, probably to update uh, internal registers. And only now we finished uh, executing uh, the instruction and we'll go uh, through the same process, incrementing the program counter, uh, send uh, the new program counter address, read the instruction, decode, uh, go to the RAM, and so on. And uh, remember, uh, apart from uh, the CPU simulation, we also need uh, to simulate the two other uh, chips, uh, ROM and the RAM chip. Uh, 
Uh, on the other hand, uh, if we plan to make a unitary simulation uh, that handles both CPU and support chips, uh, things are a bit simpler because uh, we read the instruction at address in a single step. Uh, we no longer need to send uh, the address uh, on the pins. Uh, we don't need to simulate uh, the other chips. Uh, then we decode the instruction. This step is common. We need to look at the opcode primarily and see what type of instruction is in there. Uh, then if we have uh, RAM access, uh, in this second case we simply uh, read or write uh, data at a specified address and we update internal registers. Again, this uh, part of updating internal registers is common between the two types of uh, simulation. And we now finished with the instruction processing, so we repeat this process. Uh, this uh, system-based approach, uh, simulating uh, in a single step the CPU and the support chips, is uh, faster and easier to implement. Uh, so uh, in uh, later videos I will uh, cover this part uh, and not uh, the CPU only uh, simulation. Uh, from the point of view of uh, running a program, uh, there is actually no difference because the same instructions can be executed in both approaches. Uh, however, in the second case, uh, it will probably be faster since uh, we don't have this many steps involved in the CPU and we also don't have uh, complex uh, IC simulation for the ROM and RAM chips. Instead, uh, it's uh, in a way a uh, transformation to a, a current architecture where we simply provide an address and we read uh, the instruction there. And we don't need to split it in uh, uh, four bits. Okay, so this concludes part one of this video. Uh, in part two, uh, we'll cover a Java-based simulation of the 4004, uh, as I mentioned, also with the supporting ICs uh, combined in the same uh, simulation. And until then, uh, you can take a look at uh, the Java System Simulator project at GitHub. Uh, where uh, this 4004 simulation is already implemented uh, together with uh, additional uh, simulations that uh, I described previously and uh, probably uh, new simulations that I will do videos soon. So, see you next time.